Back with you live tonight here on In Focus, and thanks for staying on. Yet another ANC leader has uh, come out right critical of party president Sir Ramaphosa's leadership and his tenure as party head, ANC National Executive Committee member and Deputy Public Enterprises Minister Pumulo Maswale has openly endorsed support uh, for former Treasurer General and Health Minister Dr. Zuelim Kize Maswale's declaration comes amid perceived criticism of the party's president by former President Zuma and Mbeki. Joining us now to outline his allegiances in NEC, um, is NEC member and Deputy Public uh, Enterprises Minister Pumulo Maswale. Good evening, good to have you and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to you and uh, good evening to the listeners. I suppose the horse has already bolted because clearly leaders are criticizing the current leader outside the party structures. And some have come out to say, well, you've got enough instruments within the organization to be able to, to do so. Well, no, no, that's, that's, a, that's an order. I, I think um, the, the national spokesperson uh, issued the statement uh, this uh, afternoon. Uh, I saw it in the evening. I think uh, it was uh, uh, timely and uh, proper, I think, uh, so that there isn't a free-for-all kind of uh, situation uh, where there are issues that are concerning. Uh, they should uh, find uh, different uh, ways of being uh, ventilated. Uh, I think uh, I would have added uh, to the commentary that's been made to say maybe they could even be considered uh, uh, some face-to-face uh, -face, uh, engagements uh, with the uh, former presidents, maybe the officials, so as to really appreciate as to what could have led to this and what the real issues are. Yeah. W what is particularly surprising for me about your criticism is, is you're criticizing an administration that you're, you're a part of, right? You're a deputy minister who is led by the president who you are saying he needs I mean, to take a different approach as far as giving leadership. Uh, why, why are you finding fault with a leader that you, you're currently part of his administration? Have you thought of resigning and say, I, you're poor leader, <laughs> I can't serve you? Now, firstly, let me just say that uh, the two don't have anything to do with each other. The context in which uh, I expressed my views uh, was the context in which we are preparing uh, to, to, to a national conference, a conference of the ANC, uh, to which um, uh, we um, have the opportunity to looking at uh, the, the challenges that uh, face the movement uh, all, all around and uh, to really think through going forward how best do we position ourselves so as to be able to deal with the challenges that we have? I think that was in that uh, context that I made uh, those uh, remarks. And I get the sense that it has created quite a, a lot of uh, 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 commentary, uh, some along the lines you're making. And I thought it, it is really out of context in the sense that, uh, uh, yes, uh, one serves in the executive at the invitation uh, of the president and where it concerns uh, the work that's happening there uh, uh, it is really the, 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 the call of the president as to what should happen yeah. but that does not uh, suggest that uh, your thinking and uh, ability to express your views is sub subsumed into that uh, and in this instance, I speak in my capacity as a member of the ANC, yes. as a member of the National Executive Committee. Right. I express my view in respect of what is taking place throughout the country. Branches of the ANC are engaging the matter, and there are views that I express. And I think at this time, it should be that uh, there is that uh, festival of ideas, views. Yeah. Ultimately, conference will be the decider. Okay. I think it's two, or if not three, members of the ANC. I think one happened actually yesterday with the Dr. Matole Mutsecha, and I think one of them was the chairperson of the branch that uh, uh, President Sir Ramaphosa is a member of. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, one of the leaders that I spoke to in, in Limpopo raised this question of, there is no member of the NEC in particular that can come out 
and criticize one man and say, you are the reason why the party is weak. Those people in there know that is the responsibility of a collective. In an NEC meeting, the president comes and sits, top six yes. members, they <laughs> sit there. You yes. all have contribution and make contribution on what needs to be done. Yes, uh, partially I think that is correct. Uh, that, that is true in the sense that uh, we embrace the principle of collective leadership. And uh, so when we talk about the challenges facing the movement and uh, some of the problems we have, it is indeed true that you cannot uh, pin one individual outside of the collective uh, to be the cause or the reason for such uh, difficulties. Uh, I think uh, that, that is partially correct. I'm saying partially. Yeah. Because I would have expanded to say, when you look at the sum total, we are at the point where we're going into conference and preparing and hopefully the conference uh, for it to enable ourselves uh, to launch ourselves into a different uh, paradigm altogether in terms of dealing with such problems. In that context, uh, we can then make commentary as to who in the context of uh, the cadership we have, we think best to lead us going forward. That also is uh, in order. Uh, so, so I think um, the, the, the problem, it's, it's been personalized, uh, yet it, is, it, it should not. You see, what will happen at conference is that uh, the, having made reports, uh, all starting with the president and all the members of the NEC, all 86 of them, they will be invited to vacate the positions of the NEC. They all step down. Yeah. An impression is being created here that the president is being removed. Uh, it's far from the truth. There's no one who's getting removed. It's just that, that the end of term would have arrived. And no one has been uh, elected with an undertaking that you will get re-election. Yeah. It's not automatic. We shall all step down and then it is left to the conference to decide on who to re-elect if they deem fit. Yeah. And, uh, and, and thus a new NEC will emerge. And on what are you basing your, your call for a change in leadership? Uh, to, to Dr. Zelim Kizer. I tell you why, Dr. Matolo himself, in fact, believes there is actually not even a need to change leadership except to fill the positions uh, of those. One is the Deputy uh, uh, Secretary General who passed away. The other one uh, is the suspended uh, Secretary General because those, those of course, are, 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 are vacant at the moment. But he believes, actually, the, the, the matter, the issue that should be preoccupying leaders of the ANC is not about these top six positions. It's about addressing the question of land. I'm sure you've read that paper. No, no, thank you very much. I, I think, I think uh, uh, Comrade Matole is entitled to that view, and we cannot uh, delegitimize it. Uh, so are other views. Uh, and, and I think uh, uh, it should be that uh, all of them are uh, considered equally. Yeah and presented to conference and for conference to decide. So, so, so it, 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 it shouldn't be that uh, there are views that uh, need not find uh, uh, engagement uh, in, in, in the discourse uh, going forward. Let, let me just uh, say again, uh, without departing from the spirit of collective leadership, uh, I think though we must uh, appreciate the, the depth of the issues that are confronting us. Firstly, internally, organizationally, uh, we are challenged with uh, issues of coherence, the ability to really uh, act together, uh, to uh, even implement decisions we have made at a critical time where there are even difficulties external uh, to, the, to the movement. Uh, if you're looking at the time we're devoting uh, to uh, just the internal organs uh, of the ANC, the limbs, the legs of the ANC. Uh, if you look at the state of our leagues uh, presently, you're looking at the state of the alliance uh, presently. Uh, all these, in my view, yeah. uh, call for uh, really uh, a, a fresh impetus in how 
you really traverse such areas. Of course, external uh, to the movement, issues to do with interface with the different sectors of society, including important questions to do with uh, the economy. All of them, unfortunately, which is where I, I make uh, my uh, conclusive statement, is that uh, amongst members of the NEC, there is disproportionateness insofar as uh, responsibilities. Just as we are part of this uh, collective and there is a principle of collective leadership, there is an expectation which is a little more than that of an ordinary member of the NEC uh, to a chairperson of the committee for which I am. There is a difference in terms of the expectation uh, to one of the... Um, there is a difference expected of the Secretary General just as there is a difference uh, in terms of what is expected of the President in terms of uh, these uh, myriad of challenges that we face. It was in that view that I thought, given the attributes that uh, surely the President has, uh, but the environment to me requires a lot more than that in terms of the ability to uh, have the necessary uh, interface in a way that, we, uh, would, that will enable uh, the, the, the ANC uh, to strike a chord uh, with all these constituencies in a manner that takes the country forward. Yeah. Well, why, why do you think there is a lack of coher coherence in the ANC? One could even argue and say the ANC is the biggest opposition to itself currently right now because of the factional battles that are being fought internally. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, uh, it, it's one of the uh, uh, Achilles heels uh, to the movement at present. And again, I uh, tend to apportion blame to the leadership in how it gives that leadership over its constituency. Um, factionalism is one of the things we set out from uh, the 54th National Conference to defeat. I don't think we fared well in that. In fact, I'm being modest when I say so. Uh, it has become more entrenched, and in some instances we've had people who belonged to a particular lobby uh, before the 54th National Conference. They still remain part of that lobby into the 55th Conference. So it means you have really been saying things that you were not doing in practice. Uh, I think that is another problem. So, so I think, uh, I believe that uh, we, we need uh, to give ourselves, of course, the membership, uh, the delegates at conference, uh, to relook at uh, the whole collective of leadership and uh, with emphasis on the amount of time and work, the way we devote work to, to this, uh, in my mind, I think there needs to be a bit of step change uh, from the usual. We continue in a moment. Uh, we have with us NEC member, Deputy Public Enterprises Minister, uh, Mulo Maswale, and we'll ask him, next, according to his track record in government and in other places of leadership, why does he believe he would make a good SG of the party and how he could be able to unify and renew the organization uh, as uh, a member of that top six? Stay with us. In focus continues with you. Welcome back. Live with you tonight at In Focus. Thanks for staying on. Still with us, uh, the NEC member and Deputy Public Enterprises Minister, Pumulio Masuelu, who is a contender, according to the branches uh, of the Eastern Cape, for the position of Secretary uh, General. Others would argue, I mean, in the language of the ANC, to say, oh, Masuelu couldn't even convince province. Why does he think he is going <laughs> to go and in, in, in convince national conference that he must be SG? All right. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, um, look, what has uh, happened uh, is that um, when uh, the opportunity was opened uh, for branches to indicate their preferences, um, in some parts of the uh, country, provincial executives, uh, uh, before that process ran its course, uh, expressed their views uh, as the executives. Uh, the case in point in the Eastern Cape, the PEC expressed its preference, and I was not part of that. Mm. And then there was this uh, anticipation, and people brought back. Uh, there wasn't uh, good relations, etc. When I was premier there, but uh, you see, a lot has changed. Uh, there's been very 
a remarkable uh, show of support uh, from virtually all the sub-regions in the Eastern Cape. And uh, so much that uh, this, for, for me, uh, prompted that uh, we open a conversation with uh, the provincial leadership uh, uh, so that uh, we, we do not have a situation as if there is a revolt uh, against the provincial leadership. Uh, so uh, we had very fruitful engagements with the provincial secretary. I think uh, give a, we'll give them time. Uh, they'll be able to, in the interactions with other provinces, uh, inf informed by the reality emerging on the ground, I do expect them uh, to not, take, not to disregard that. Uh, of course, uh, I do have the support of the other provinces. I'm really getting uh, a fair amount of uh, nominations uh, from other provinces. Um, but of course, uh, uh, those nominations uh, mean nothing. They are not conference. Uh, we still have to go to conference where uh, the decision rests on delegates in conference uh, as to uh, uh, what, what uh, outcome. Uh, the, the, the G given, I suppose your track record as Premier, given your track record now as the, 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 the Deputy Minister of Public Enterprises, many questions, for example, would, would, would come out of, 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 of that current position in this administration. Many would question, for example, the progress that has been made and commitment that has been made in, in fixing SOEs, right? Yes. Why, why would you think, I mean, even now as we sit with this administration, that uh, ESCOM is still having the kind of battles that it's having, while Denel is still struggling to pay salaries, even though you yourself spoke in Parliament at some point that, no, we'll get this right, we'll fix this thing. Um, uh, SAA is, is either yes. being sold for 51 cents or 51 dollars, <laughs> I'm not sure, this particular point. Okay. I, I have really have been deliberate in not wanting to to play issues. Yeah. Where we come to talk about uh, progress or lack of progress in government, there are structures through which we come to, to speak to those. And surely uh, there are issues uh, that are in themselves constraints, uh, particularly for uh, the portfolio of a deputy minister. Uh, certain things you've got to take a uh, cue from the minister as to what to say, what not to say. So I prefer when I speak in my individual capacity not to delve with matters of that nature. Um, safe to say that, yes, it is a fact that uh, we do have uh, uh, challenges uh, in respect of uh, the areas you've referred to. Uh, and, and I think at the level of government, there's every effort uh, to try and uh, get uh, those matters uh, resolved. But I'm not speaking about those yeah. in the platform of the ANC. Yeah. But I'm raising them because one would say those probably are the biggest issues that have led to the poor performance of the ANC at local government elections that would probably lead to the poor performance of the ANC in 2024. More than what you as the ANC are looking at as your own internal leadership battles. Yes, they, they have. They have contributed uh, significantly. Um, but I think uh, there are also other very significant matters that are internal to the ANC that need to be fixed. And that uh, when those are fixed, we are better able even to relate with these other matters uh, that are taking place uh, in the domain of governance uh, generally. Yeah. So I, I, are you saying the, the renewal pro project, shall we say, has been a complete failure? I wouldn't say a complete failure, but I would say not the kind of success uh, we envisaged. It's work in progress, but there's got to be a lot of uh, uh, very stringent, or shall I say, decisive measures taken uh, to, 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 to drive uh, that uh, renewal program. Uh, it's been reflected even in the policy conference. There's been quite a lot of engagement to it, various proposals were made that should go to the conference in respect of how to see to the uh, further enhancement of that uh, effort. Uh, I think uh, it, it, it is uh, the success we have recorded on it is, is less than what we had anticipated. Yeah. What, what, what was the anticipation? I mean, we, we're hearing today, for example, 
Limpopo, KwaZulu Natal is, is one in, in that statement that I saw who are saying, you know, this thing of uh, step aside must be scrapped. Because that was part of the thing that conference agreed on. It's not a decision of one person. It's yes. coming out of conference to say if leaders are found to be criminally charged and facing uh, some criminal charges, they must step aside, sort themselves out, and they can always uh, come back. But now you're hearing leaders saying, no, this thing is, 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 is not going to work. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's, 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 it's not going to deliver economic emancipation of the people. I think it's the word that they use. I paraphrase. Okay. I, I, I make, I, I draw a distinction. Uh, 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 the, it's, a, it's a conference resolution. There's been attempts to try and improve its imp on its implementation. There's been attempts to really improve uh, the application of that uh, rule. And I think, for me, it is in that theater that uh, a lot of challenges emerged. To the extent there are those challenges, it is fair to say, as would happen with any other resolution, at conference, there shall be an opportunity to review all resolutions, to look at how we have fed in each of them, what were the lessons, what were the obstacles, improve on them, or take a decision to scrap them if there is a sense that they are not uh, useful anymore. Yeah. That's the function of conference uh, to, to decide. So, so again, it shouldn't be a, a, a divisive issue. Uh, because we're looking at a conference resolution, its impact, its uh, efficacy insofar as we have attempted to apply it. At conference, there will be reports, it will be engaged. The approach that is being taken, particularly around the elections now, with the uh, commission that is uh, led by former President Kalima Mutlante, and, 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 and trying to get rid of this thing of slates. And I'm not sure whether you'll be successful, because instead of getting rid of slates, we have seen more slates going to this conference than I suppose we, 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 we've seen before. Uh, and various <laughs> people coming, this one, President, that one, Deputy President, it's, it's just continuing to to, uh, I suppose, fragment the organization even more in, in a time when you are saying it needs a leader that will be able to unite everyone under one vision. Yes, no, no, I, I don't think it's a, it's a problem at all. It's actually healthy. It's healthy when there are the, 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 the delegates at conference have to make a choice between quite a number of potential candidates. It, 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 is, it is healthy as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what is a problem is where after conference people cling to the candidates they had uh, preferred coming to the conference. Because after the conference, what is the decision by way of outcome of conference is what should bind all of us. Yeah. So, so uh, different to when there would have it's been... It's a good thing that the ANC says. They say even now in the Eastern Cape, after the conference, that's what they said. That, okay, fine, you are supporting th this particular leader. There won't be purging uh, and so on and so forth. Yes. That one will still remain in their position and so on and so forth. But it, it doesn't happen in practice. Okay, this is part of the problem that needs to be fixed. Because in essence, you shouldn't look at people insofar as what positions, what views they held, who do they support. People must be looked at only insofar as what are they capable of, what contribution can they make. In fact, many a times you do hear people say, you know this thing of factions is really so constraining. You know that Comrade X would make a big difference uh, if he was part of this effort. But because he belonged to another slate, he cannot be considered or she cannot be considered. I think it's a problem of really which is what we need leadership to help us get out of that. This needs to be led. It needs to be driven. And at the top, it should be that uh, the, the effort is to undermine this thing. In fact, the state of well-being of the ANC, its, its components, its leagues, will only be what we expect of it when we do away with that. And I believe it is something that it is possible through the active leadership uh, and of course, that leadership uh, rests differently at the uh, individual leaders we have. 
the president in respect of that holds even greater responsibility. As Secretary General of the ANC, you're essentially the CEO who will be running Tuli House in, 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 in a sense. Currently, what's happening at your Tuli House is the inability to even pay salaries. I mean, if, if you go into that position and you are to steer that ship to, to rectify that, what, what would you do? Well, certainly it is a, a, an, an objective constraint we sit with presently, an undesirable situation. Uh, I know the NEC presently, even the, the TG is, is talking to that uh, insofar as the interventions necessary. But going forward, it's something that we do not need at all. We don't need that kind of problem. It should be that uh, we look at the complement of staff we need. We are able to look after them because it can't be that you employ people whom you are unable even to meet their requirements insofar as payments, etc. I think we've got to work at that, but a large part of this also rests on the ability to uh, raise funds for the ANC, the means available to do that. And again, uh, there we are looking at a number of things uh, that uh, some which uh, are legislations we've put in place that have circumscribed issue of uh, funding to political parties. I think there is even a view that uh, we were, whilst we were agreeable to this, there was a premise that uh, the, 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 there would be uh, some funding that would come because democracy comes at a cost. Uh, but all of that didn't happen. Of course, there are too many problems that uh, are facing uh, uh, the fiscals in, in, in the country as we speak. But it's a matter that, uh, as the ANC, we've got to find a, a proper resolution continuously on it because yeah. programs depend on that. As well as, uh, you see, what, what I think we have made a mistake uh, over a bit longer time was this uh, preoccupation with governance over the institutional, institutional arrangements of the ANC. We've neglected that. Uh, I mean, even when we talk about these problems, in terms of uh, a policy, policy development, etc., uh, Lutuli House is a, is a pale shadow of what it used to be in the past. And over time, there's been this migration uh, all the way down to regional offices. And of course, then there came in another thing, that if you are a chairperson of a province, you must be premier. Uh, regardless, uh, if you are this, you must be that. I think all of that has tended to make the party to be just a step to governance uh, without looking at the capacity uh, of the party itself. Uh, I think over this period of time, a good lesson is that we've made an error. We must go back and fix that. Pumula Maswale, appreciate your time and thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you very much. That is uh, the uh, NEC member and Deputy Public Enterprises Minister, also contender uh, for the top six position of Secretary General in the upcoming conference of the African National Congress.